Hello and welcome to Excalcast. It's September 18th and today we are discussing a recommendation in the latest METRAC report regarding women's studies and the recent strand of sexual assaults on the York campus. I'm joined by Eva Karpinski. Hello, Eva. Hi. She is an assistant for the pro as a, an assistant professor at the School of Gender, Sexuality, and Women's Studies here at York University. So, just to bring all of you listeners up to speed, the 2010 Metro uh, Metropolitan Action Committee on Violence Against Women and Children, or METRAC for short, they came. They released a safety audit, and uh, their report is suggesting that York Institute a mandatory equity or women's studies course as a requirement for all York undergraduate degree students. And the YFS is also currently lobbying, lobbying the administration to implement this recommendation for the, uh, the course, which they believe will help students engage in dialogue about some of the root issues surrounding sexual assault and violence. And they're, they're also hoping that this, cor this course will help to curb sexual assaults against uh, violence on campus. So to kick things off, Eva, do you believe that women's study, that a women's studies course will actually help to reduce sexual assaults and violence on campus? Okay. Well, you may be surprised, but I'm going to say that this is the wrong question, really. Asking about if a women's studies course will actually help to reduce sexual assault on campus, I would say definitely no, or we don't know, or we have no guarantee that it would. So it's just isolating one issue, one piece of the puzzle from a much more complicated uh, situation. And I think that we need to go back uh, precisely to the METRAC safety audit um, and the recommendations that were already made in 2010. And this set of recommendations that is available uh, to the York community, but very few people know where to find it. Uh, I have actually accessed it through the SASL um, website. Yeah. So they have it on their website, but you need to really uh, navigate to be able to download it. And I think that reading the entire document is where we should be, you know, learning from, rather than picking up a single recommendation out of the context and uh, lobbying for a mandatory introduction of equity or women's studies courses. Uh, <clears throat> first of all, I don't like the word mandatory in this context because it is definitely going to provoke resistance among students and among the faculty probably as well, and among the administrators, it would also then uh, constitute a sort of like a contained site. Here is where we are doing what we're supposed to be doing. We have this, this course on the books. We've done our bit. Whereas the issue of violence and safety on campus is a much more complex problem and you need a more holistic approach. The other problem is obviously like logistics. With over 50,000 students and ten, more than 10,000 uh, coming every year, how is it going to be administered? How is it going to be delivered? As a women's studies professor, I, I absolutely believe that women's studies courses are important and currently probably one of very few avenues for students to be exposed to the kind of analysis that helps us understand systemic issues of violence and how it affects vulnerable people in our communities, women, trans people, gay and lesbian people, people with disabilities, uh, people from minoritized groups who are victims of like Islamophobia, uh, racialized people, uh, people uh, attacked uh, through anti-Semitism and so on. So these are all issues of safety and they are much more complex than just offering a women's studies course, right? So uh, you could learn a lot from a women's studies course, of course, but I would suggest that we take a more holistic approach. Go and read at least the recommendations of the METRAC report. And what people recommend is sort of like in, in four different areas, and, and one of them is the infrastructure and the physical uh, space on campus, which is a huge thing. And then you have um, existing security provisions like safety programs that are already there. And York has been doing a lot in the last years, investing a lot and developing a lot of programs people just don't know about. So are, are you then suggesting that maybe the problem doesn't just lie with um, potential troublemakers within our own student body, but also with members of the community surrounding York and how, and how York yes. can maybe integrate itself with the community and not just the students mm -hmm. to make a safer environment rather than just a safer campus? Right. I think that the problem of violence is systemic, which means it's not just contained within one community. This community is a microcosm of society at large, right? right? And people here carry the same prejudices, the same hatreds, 
the same you know, disposition towards others and ways of interacting with others that you see at large. Some universities in the States have a mandatory reporting policy, but it's not just like we do that, you know, publishing alerts. Um, they have to publish like annual reports mm -hmm. uh, disclosing all kinds of crimes well, I actually have committed on campus. I actually have yes. this report in front of me. Yes. The current stats for, you know, the uh, the wrap up of 2012 aren't in yet because, of course, we are still in 2012. Yes. But I can hopefully there will be a few. Hopefully they now. hopefully they won't go up. But I can read you a few of the ones that are yes. directly concerning this topic of sexual assaults and sexual mm -hmm. harassment. So, mm -hmm. in 2011 and 2012, aggravated sexual assaults as a total were zero reported. Now that doesn't mean they didn't happen. That just means of the ones reported. Yes. There were, or, uh, there, there were no, yes, there were no incidents that were issue. reported. Reporting is actually a huge is issue. It's been theorized by many people, yes. you know, the problems with reporting. Yes. Overall sexual assaults, there were only four reported cases. I know oftentimes it may feel like there are more, but sometimes, you know, they can prove to either be a false claim or it can maybe fall under a different category and someone just doesn't know at the time what to classify it so they can say, oh, yes. you know, I've been sexually assaulted. If but it, it might just be, you know, a false alarm or uh, obviously I'm not saying anyone is, is doing this intentionally, but it could just turn mm -hmm. out that this mm -hmm. is the case. May I just interrupt you here because I want to insert statistics. First of all, statistically, um, only about 2 to 3 percent of sexual assault reports are so-called false reports, which means that 98 are true, mm -hmm. you know, so that's not an issue. It's not a large issue. Uh, the other thing is that uh, sexual assault crimes are actually one of the most underreported crimes. So we see about 20 to 30 percent of them reported only. So you're seeing mm -hmm. the tip of the iceberg, really. And this is like proven everywhere by research done in the States, in Canada. Mm -hmm. um, so we need to keep that in mind, you know, that we're only looking at this tip of the iceberg here. Yeah. And that is also related to, the, to lack of clear definitions and, and lack of familiarity on the part of uh, you know, the community, students, faculty, mm -hmm. staff, uh, with those definitions, you know? Yeah. Well, these, these, these statistics that you're quoting, I mean, if people are interested in looking it up for themselves, where can they go to see the same ones that you're referencing? Um, there are quite a lot of reports, even if you go on the internet and punch in some. So there have been studies commissioned by the government, for instance, in the United States, where those statistics are quoted. Then the there will be other reports as well, like the, the uh, METRAC report also gives you some statistics. Mm -hmm. So SASL uh, has a website here. Uh, York actually has some of those statistics on its website. I wanted to actually uh, draw people's attention to that. The sexual assault and awareness resources and the um, SASL materials, they can be found on websites which are linked to the Center for Human Rights and the Office of Student Conflict Resolution at York. And this is another problem because it's not immediately, so it's a human rights issue, in other words, right? And it's not immediately seen as such by people who have anything to do. With well, they, they, they don't realize that their, <coughs> their, their human rights have been violated. Exactly, and then, yes. Yeah. So there should be like a clearer way of linking this to codes of conduct for everyone, for faculty, you know, mm -hmm. uh, students, staff, uh, for, for visitors also. And it should be clearly also articulated that it's a crime. Yeah. Well, that's all the time we have today. Thank you, Thank Eva, you. for your, for your uh, educating and informative commentary. You're very well. To find out more, check out the uh, next issue of Excalibur, which comes out on the 19th or Wednesday, tomorrow. I'm Phil Darlington, Excalcast.